Today, I'm going to show you how to create a brushed metal effect in Unreal and Unity. Let's go. So in just a minute, I want to show you how to create this effect in Unity first and then Unreal. But before we do that, I want to take a look at a couple of pictures so I can identify the properties of brushed metal that we're going to be creating today. So what this first picture shows is that when metal is brushed, it creates these tiny directional grooves in the metal. And sometimes these grooves are, are so small that they're sub pixel in size when we create them in computer graphics. Um, in order to actually see the grooves, you'd need to use a magnifying glass. So what you can see here is because this surface is grooved, uh, each of these tiny grooves is catching the light and it's making the specular reflection or the reflection of the light source seem like it's long instead of round. And this is called anisotropic. So the word anisotropic means uh, like not uniform. It means it's stretched out. So the specular highlight that we can see here in the middle is stretched out because the surface has these tiny grooves in it. We can see the same thing here. Here's a Christmas tree ornament that's made with uh, thousands of tiny threads that are going from the top pole to the bottom pole of the ornament. And these threads are creating the same kind of an effect. So um, they're creating these tiny grooves that are all going in the same direction. And so when it catches the light, it makes that specular highlight uh, look like it's uh, following against the flow of the grooves. Um, so instead of having a nice round specular highlight like on this little circle here, uh, we have this irregular shaped specular highlight that's deformed because of those microscopic grooves in the surface. All right, if you take a look at the bottom of a pan, uh, there's a circular pattern in the pan uh, with a, like a singularity right in the middle. Um, and this is a this is another design here where we've got lots of uh, circles on the surface of metal. Again, we have these tiny grooves, and the grooves change uh, the specular reflection so that they uh, go in toward the middle or against the grain. So, if you want to create a brushed metal effect, oh, one more thing. This also happens at the beach. If we take a look at the sunset at the beach. You can see that the reflection of the sun in the water is elongated. Instead of just seeing a circle reflection of the sun, it looks like the sun has been stretched really long. And the reason for that is because there's an anisotropic specular highlight. All of the waves in the ocean are creating this effect and making that highlight stretch out just like it does on brushed metal. All right, let's jump back into the engines and take a look at how to do this uh, first in Unity and then in Unreal. All right, so here we are in Unity and you can see that I've got two examples of brushed metal here. This one has the, the brushing all going in a uniform direction and this one has the brushing uh, doing that crazy circular thing that we were looking at a minute ago in that photo. So let's take a look at how to do this. I've created a new shader graph shader and if I take a look in the graph inspector under the graph settings, I can go to material type here and switch the material type from standard to anisotropy. And this is the effect that we need to create brushed metal and other anisotropic effects. So I'm going to turn on anisotropy. And what you're going to notice is that it's added two additional inputs down here at the bottom of the master stack. So in order to see exactly what this is doing, the first thing that I'm going to do is connect a slider to this anisotropy input. And right now my slider's value is set to zero. And you can see that I have a specular highlight here, but it's nice and round. I have an isotropic specular highlight. But if I want to adjust this, I can move my slider between negative one and one. So let's see what happens if I move it toward one. Can you see the specular highlight up there on the preview? Now my uh, preview sphere here is starting to look more like that Christmas tree ornament that we took a look at 
uh, it looks like we have these lines going from one pole to the other pole and it's uh, warping the specular highlight of my preview sphere here. So as I move my slider toward one, I'm getting um, the simulation as if I had subpixel grooves going from one pole to the other. But as I move this uh, toward zero again, I get isotropic. And then as I go into the negative, now I start getting specular highlights that go the other way. So it looks like I have grooves uh, that are going around the circumference of my sphere the opposite direction. So the further I move it toward negative one, uh, the uh, more powerful the effect is with the grooves going around the circle. And the more I move it toward positive one, the more powerful the effect is of the subpixel grooves going from pole to pole. All right, now there are some additional things that we can do to control this effect and improve it. I've created a texture that looks like this. Uh, so I used uh, Substance Designer to create this texture. Uh, let's just pull that real, up really quick and I can show you. Um, so I use this anisotropic noise and uh, then I just saved out that texture. Um, and this is what we can use to imitate the appearance of those subpixel grooves. Um, I will link this texture down in the description so you can download it, but it's also pretty easy to uh, to create this. All right, so here I brought in um, my texture with the grooves, and I've taken my UV coordinates, and I multiplied them by 5 and by 10, uh, just to make these grooves pretty tight. And now I'm going to take, uh, take these lines here, and I'm going to wire them into... Uh, my smoothness input and that's gonna just improve the appearance now that now this this looks kind of wrong here and the reason is uh, these lines that I have projected with this texture are going around the circumference of my sphere um, but the anisotropic highlights are indicating that the lines should be going in the opposite direction and so what I need to do is change my anisotropy input so that it is going in the opposite direction. And now the specular highlights that we're getting and the lines that we're seeing on the surface uh, match up so that I'm getting that highlight that would be created by those subpixel groups in the surface. All right, so I can use a texture like this uh, to indicate um, visible subpixel lines. And then I can adjust my anisotropy here to uh, control whether the lines are going around the sphere or from pole to pole. So that's pretty cool. I do have one last thing to show, and that is uh, this texture here that allows us to create uh, those circular lines. So in the case that I'm doing right now, before I connect this texture to anything, my lines are going in the direction of the UV coordinates on the surface. But what I want to do with this texture over here is indicate exactly what direction I'd like to go. So these pixels here, just like in a normal map, these pixels here indicate the direction of brushing. So I can take this texture and I can plug it into this other input here called tangent. And this tells my shader which direction the tangent on the surface is going. Now you'll notice that I have this set to be a normal map. And the reason I have it set to be a normal map is so that the engine will automatically expand my texture from the zero to one space to the negative one to one space, which is what I need for a normal, but it's also what I need for a tangent map. So this map is indicating the direction of the grooves on the surface. And I've plugged that right into uh, my tangent there. All right, so you can see that the, um, the texture here is telling the surface what direction my specular highlights are facing. And it's a little bit easier to tell what's going on if I switch this over to a cube. So let's take a look at that. As I move the cube around, you can see that the specular highlights are behaving as though they are, there are these circular shaped 
uh, sub-pixel grooves in the surface. So, pretty cool. I can use this texture to indicate uh, the direction that the grooves are facing. So, uh, I've got this anisotropy uh, input that I can control the uh, power and overall direction of the grooves. Uh, kind of control the strength. And I can go negative or positive on this depending on the direction that I want those grooves to flow. And then if I want even more control over this effect, I can use a texture uh, that's similar to a normal map, but this is called a tangent map that's indicating the direction of flow on the surface. All right, so that's how you create brushed metal effects uh, in Unity. Let's now switch over to Unreal and I'll show you how to get these same effects in that engine. All right, here we are in Unreal and you can see that I've got a very similar setup to what I did in Unity. Uh, the difference in Unreal with this setup is that the uh, root node here already has this anisotropy input uh, without me needing to do anything. So if I disconnect this node here from the anisotropy, um, that will be giving it a value of zero. And so I have no anisotropic specular highlights. Let's just switch to a sphere really quick. So you can see I'm using that uh, brushed texture again. Um, so here's that brush texture, the same one that I was using in Unity. But my specular highlights are still perfectly round. So I have this anisotropic input here um, that I can connect. And if I, if I connect something to it and give it a value of zero, um, that's the same as having nothing connected. So it's not going to do anything. You know what, just for a minute, I'm going to disconnect the texture and I'm going to set the roughness to zero just so we have a perfectly smooth sphere here. Eh, maybe not zero. Let's come down uh, just a bit. We'll set it to maybe 0 0.2. Now you can see that nice round specular highlight there. Uh, if we move this in the positive direction, let's say 0 0.5, uh, now you can see that my specular highlight is warped uh, as though I had, um, this is like the Christmas tree ornament one where the, um, the grooves are going from pole to pole. Uh, let's set this to more like 0 0.8 so we get a nice uh, long stretched specular highlight nice and deformed um, because I have these really um, deep micro pixel grooves in my surface and if I set it to negative let's go negative 0 0.8 now my grooves are going the opposite direction um, they're going around the, the circumference of my of my object and so that makes my uh, specular highlight deformed uh, in a vertical direction like this but maybe well, let's stick with uh, negative 0.5 so we got a nice stretched highlight there and i'm going to switch i'm going to set my um, texture here as the roughness so now you can see i can get a really nice looking specular highlight there and then as i come up here toward the top um, I get this effect where it's going around in circles and that looks kind of like uh, the bottom of your pots and pans in your kitchen. Okay, I do have one more thing to show and that is how to use this uh, tangent input here. Uh, the tangent input is very similar to a normal, but the normal indicates the direction that the surface is facing uh, in kind of an outward direction and the tangent um, indicates the direction that the surface is flowing along the surface. Uh, so right now, uh, my surface is flowing kind of in a circular pattern here, but if I want to control exactly which direction uh, this uh, surface is flowing, I can use a tangent map. So I have a tangent map over here, and we can go ahead and uh, plug this in to the tangent input to control precisely this direction. So here I have a map that's similar to a normal map, but it's indicating the direction the surface is going uh, instead of the direction the surface is facing. So I'm gonna plug this tangent map into my tangent input. Uh, and it's a little bit hard to tell on a sphere, so I'll switch it over to a cube here. And now you can see that my tangent map is controlling the direction of those micro grooves along the surface. It 
kind of looks like a, uh, a record or the bottom of a pot. So pretty cool. I can use this uh, tangent map to exactly control the direction of those grooves. Now, one thing that doesn't really work very well is right now I've got this, um, this groove map that's all going in one direction, but my tangent map is indicating that the grooves should be kind of going in a circular direction. So I'm going to turn that groove map off there uh, just so it looks a little bit nicer, a little bit more natural. Now I could make another groove map like this, but with the grooves following the direction of these tangents. Uh, and that would be a little bit more helpful to, to create an effect that was uh, a little bit more natural looking. Okay, so that's how you create brushed metal. Basically, uh, I set my base color to one. Uh, maybe I should set it a little bit lower because nothing is perfectly reflective. Uh, and then I set my metallic to one. Uh, and then I use this texture in my roughness to indicate the grooves. I used this value to indicate uh, uh, what type of anisotropy to use, uh, either vertical or horizontal. And then I use this uh, tangent map to control the flow direction uh, of those micro grooves on the surface. And we end up with these really cool looking specular highlights uh, that indicate uh, that the, the surface has been brushed. All right, so that's how you create brushed metal in Unity and in Unreal. Uh, I'm glad that you're all here and watching. Thanks for watching today's video. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to post those down in the comments and make sure to come back next week for some more shadery goodness. I think I may be doing uh, maybe an eye tutorial or a hair tutorial, uh, so be sure to come back for that. All right, have a great week, everybody.